Excellent. All right, so my name again is Francesca Finelli. I'm Associate Director of GSAS Compass. And today we'll be discussing interview basics. So I just wanted to set a couple of goals for today's presentation. I hope that you walk away with a clear understanding of the following points. And although that this presentation is for jobs really beyond academia, I think many of these, um, you know, topics that I'll be discussing would really apply to any interview um, situation. So I'd like you to be able to learn about the process of interviewing and different types uh, of interviews that you go through. Oh, and Barbara, I think there are some people in the waiting room if you don't mind letting them in. Um, and then also I'd like to develop, I'd like you to be, a, be able to develop answers to common interview questions as well as prepare for a video interview because that's what we are doing nowadays is really video interviewing. Um, and I'd like you to master following up after an interview. This is often a question that I get, how do I follow up and when do I follow up? Um, and so I'll be discussing that towards the end of the presentation. A quick introduction to interviewing why the employer wants to interview you, because they want to closely evaluate your skills, experience, and motivation to determine whether you're really a good fit for this position. And it's to assess whether you will mesh well with the company's culture by evaluating your interpersonal skills, your interest, and like the general presentation. Um, and so that was a little easier to do in person by video. Now we only see the, the top halves of ourselves. Um, and you would often get a sense of the office space because you got to walk into a space and see what people were like and what working stations were. So that's a little harder to do now in terms of actually evaluating the physical space. But the idea is you, you also want to be able to ask the employer questions. So it's your chance to interview the interviewer. So evaluate the employer beyond any secondary research you already conducted, assess the environment of the office, as I mentioned before, and identify what questions you need in order to determine if this position is right for you. I often think people at the beginning of their career think, oh, great, I'm interviewing. I just have to impress them. Well, they need to also impress you, right? Because you, we spend so much of our time at work, and it's where we often get a lot of sense of fulfillment and, um, you know, often a, a level of stress as well. So you want to make sure that this is a place that you feel comfortable with, as well as you'll be learning valuable lessons too, um, someplace where you can start to develop skills. And your first job right out of school might not be your dream job, um, but you want to make sure that it will at least uh, provide you with an opportunity to develop skills that you can then use longer term um, over the course of your career. So it is a chance for you to also interview the interviewer. All right, so the types of interviews that we have. Today's will really focus on behavioral interviews because again, that really works for any type of interview. This is academic, this is beyond academia. Um, but there are some also technical interview questions. And so um, in a moment, Barbara will be dropping into the chat some places where you can search for technical interviews. Um, and so really, they just want to test your familiarity with a subject, um, specific information, ask to demonstrate your knowledge. You might even use a whiteboard to maybe explain a concept and its applications, or they might ask you to write some code. Um, check out company websites, Glassdoor, Vault, even professors are just a few resources that you can use to learn about sample technical questions. Also, uh, another one is case interviews. So this might be for consulting. So they'll ask you to analyze a business problem and it, it's to test your problem solving skills. And so again, resources, company website, there's also Columbia Consulting Group, caseinterview.com, alumni, faculty. These are all great resources for case interviewing. A few other types of interviews include group interviews. I've done this before. So it's really designed to see how you interact with others and how you participate in a conversation around maybe a specific subject. And it also assesses your leadership style and how you collaborate with others. Also, there are task and project interviews. So they might ask you to complete a task or a project that mirrors the activities of a job, like maybe creating a public relations campaign or launching a new product. Um, the company can actually use your project afterwards. So do you feel free to ask if they will be using it afterwards and ask for copies, or if you'd like to have ownership of that project, do let them know. 
Uh, again, I did something like this and they actually took my work and used it. So um, without hiring me. <laughs> uh, so, you know, do just do keep that in mind. If they're asking you to create a project, ask how it will be used after that interview. And then sometimes there's even brain teasers. So they wanna assess how quickly you can think on your feet and how you might approach complex problems. And they're really testing your logic. And so you want to not only just solve the problem, but then verbalize your thought process. And again, there's many online resources about, about brain teasers. And then of course, online assessment sk skills. So like it's maybe gamified, they're asking you to test your skills. This is often um, for maybe more technical positions, the first step in an interview where you'll go ahead and they'll test your skills um, and your cognitive behavioral traits even. And then if you pass that test, then they'll bring you in for an in-person interview. So oop, it seems like I've skipped ahead. Yeah, so preparing for your interview, right? So questions you'd like to ask the employer before you even interview is, who will be interviewing you? Because you wanna ask for their names and job titles of who might, sometimes they'll give you an extra name and then that person just can't attend, but you wanna learn about them. Find out their title, their name, maybe even look them up on LinkedIn, learn about their previous employment history. It's so impressive, I think, when you go into an interview and you greet someone by their first name before they've even introduced themselves. That shows that you're really, you know, kind of taking initiative, that you've done your research. Um, and that's always really impressive. So do ask for, when Whenever, usually it can be like someone who's in a maybe a more administrative role in the office and they're setting up the interview for you, you can always, um, maybe you set the date and then you write back to them and say, oh, can you please give me the names and titles of the people interviewing you? So usually they'll be more than happy to share that information with you. So you should also in this digital space we are now living in during COVID-19, which technology do they plan to use? If using video, that's really the only option right now, right? So make sure that you get that information and then download that platform in advance of your meeting um, because you don't wanna be scrambling right before your interview with trying to download this program. It'll get you all nervous and you know maybe you'll show up late. Um, so do ask in advance and then download it. So research is so, so important to preparing for your interview. So you wanna learn as much about the position, the organization and the industry um, to be able to really demonstrate your interest in the position. You'll see in a little bit later in um, my presentation that a common interview question is why do you wanna work here? So this research is instrumental to answering that question. Also, check out the website and even their social media activity. This is a great way to get an understanding of the office culture and maybe even what people wear to the office. And then explore current trends um, and events that might impact your future employer. So, um, you know, if you're working at GameStop, maybe you should know or interviewing at GameStop, you should probably know what just happened recently within the stock market, right? So do your research um, so that you can talk knowledgeably in your interview about the company and what's going on with that company or organization. And then try to identify people to speak to, um, in that organization to maybe gain insider knowledge. Um, for example, when I was interviewing for my position now, I knew someone who working at GSAS and I chatted with them before my interview and got a sense of the office and maybe who I was speaking to. It's not always possible to be able to find someone, but if you can and chat with them, it's really helpful. And then do research industry and company specific interview questions because each uh, company, you can go to Glassdoor, you can go to Vault um, here, and these are the resources, as I mentioned, that you can find these industry and company specific questions even. And people will give you um, some help with maybe even answering those questions on such as Glassdoor is really good for this. It's free, you can make a free uh, account with Glassdoor and you can find a lot of specific interview questions. And then finally, um, you want to, you know, uh, just practice those questions. All right. So preparing for the interview also requires a lot of self-reflection. So first you wanna ask yourself, why do you want this job? Um, you should have asked this question even when you were writing your cover letter. So hopefully you know the answer to this, but think again, why do you want this job? What specifically interests you? And then think about how your skills, your personal qualities, your academic, your volunteer experiences, how do these all relate to make you a good candidate for the position? 
Um, and then, of course, you want to craft a narrative around these stories and these personal experiences and your skills um, and use the STAR method to really tell an employer about these experiences. If you're unfamiliar with the STAR method, don't worry. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, it really requires you to take a moment and to reflect on your experiences. So I know for many of you, um, you know, in, in, as a graduate student, you'll say, oh, I don't even know what skills I have. You all have many, many skills that you have acquired here during your time at GSAS. And these are the top 12 skills that employers really seek for, search for in candidates. And so um, problem solving skills, ability to work in a team, communication skills, and um, both written and verbal, leadership, a strong work ethic, um, analytical and quantitative skills. So anyone who's gone through a graduate program definitely has the ability to um, be have a strong work ethic, right? Uh, it's not easy to obtain a master's or a PhD. So you want to make sure that you also show taking initiative, detail-oriented, flexibility, adaptability, technical skills, interpersonal skills. These are all things that I'm sure everyone in this group has. So just make sure that these are the ones, and you can even take these, you know, think about um, in that self-reflection. When was a time that I showed leadership? When was a time that I took initiative? And then you'll craft stories around these skills. Um, so these are the top 12 skills that employers seek, and, and they're pretty, um, you know, basic, right? Everyone has these. All right, so let's talk about some common interview questions. Um, so the first question that you always get is tell me about yourself and uh, you want to use your elevator pitch, which is really uh, an introduction to you, your experience and your skills. It should be really short. It should make an impression. It should be less than a minute. Um, it should be organized, informative and succinct and answer the questions. Who are you? what you've accomplished, okay? So you need your elevator pitch for almost anything. You need it for networking, you need it for interviewing, you need it for maybe even, um, you know, just chatting to family members, right? Sometimes you'll meet, uh, uh, you know, or someone new in your life and you'll say, tell me a little about yourself and you could even use your elevator pitch then. So this is an important kind of part of the job search and this is the usually the outline. Hello, my name is Francesca Finelli. I am a graduate student in the political science program at GSAS and I graduate in May 2021. I bring, you know, and then any relevant highlights from your experiences. So when I say relevant, um, that's because, you know, you want it to be very specific. Uh, you don't want to ramble, right? It should be short and concise. So again, this takes self-reflection. Think about the job. Think about your skills and your experiences and how they relate. Um, if you want to practice your elevator pitch, please do make an appointment with us. I meant to say that at the beginning of this presentation, but GSAS Compass, do make a one-on-one -on -one appointment with us for any of these interview um, issues. Practice your elevator pitch. Um, it really takes practice. And so um, it, and it helps to practice with someone who is, you know, kind of trained in giving feedback. Uh, we also do a peer-to-peer -peer mock interview um, program, which I believe our next one will be coming up in March at some point. Register for that. It's a great way to practice with your peers um, in a safe setting and uh, to kind of, you know, hear other people uh, give their pitches to and maybe learn from them. So uh, it's a great opportunity. So then another really common interview question is why are you interested in working for this company and in this role? So it's a very common interview question, as I already said, and um, oh, I stole this slide from the workshop, but the main thing is to be enthusiastic and be authentic. You don't want to embellish or lie about why you want to work for a company, right? If you can't honestly answer this question, maybe you shouldn't be working there, right? So make sure you have an answer to this, and hopefully while you've done your research, um, before you've gone into this interview, you'll have a series of reasons as to why you want to work there. And as I said, do your research, make sure that, um, you know, you want to say, uh, why are you interested in working in this role, right? That's a, that's a clear question. And so I think that within the role, you have to think about how this kind of aligns 
with your own work goals. Um, and so it shouldn't really just be based in, oh, the pay is great. Um, you know, oh, I, I need to be working in New York City right now because that's where, you know, uh, my family is. Those are things that are, yes, very important, but maybe not what an employer wants to hear. So think about how this role will be part of your long-term career development. And often you wanna show that you'll be working someplace for a while even if that is not your intention, uh, they don't really need to know that. Um, what I've learned about interviewing is you don't need to show all of your cards. It is a little bit of telling them also what they want to hear, right? So if they, usually an employer wants to hear that you're gonna be there for a while. Um, and so if your intention is maybe you're an MA student, you're gonna take a year gap before you go maybe pursue a PhD and you're only planning to work there for a year, do not tell them that. Just say, you're really excited to be part of the company culture and to learn skills there and you know, know that this will kind of advance your career. These are easy statements to make and you don't need to give them your longer term plans. So um, as I said, you don't need to show all your cards. Oh, and here, connect it to your career trajectory, right? And so, um, as I said, make sure that this isn't just a stepping stone to show that it's someplace that you'll really want to work and grow as an individual, because then the employer will feel more comfortable investing in you. All right, another common one is what are your salary expectations? This is a tricky one. Um, and it's usually not discussed until the second interview, but you should be prepared to answer this question. And you wanna make sure that you're researching the position in the company to determine a standard rate. And again, um, Barbara just dropped into the chat a couple of resources about where to research this. You should definitely be able to give the employer a range. Do not give a specific number because um, I've done that before. I've given a specific number and then they lock you into that specific number. If they give you, if you give a range instead, that way you have some flexibility and you might be able to negotiate up. And then, as I said, check out these um, other places where you can find out more information about the salary ranges within a specific industry. A good way to respond to a salary question is, um, so how much money would you like to be making? You could always say, well, um, you know, although salary is important, um, it's not the most important thing to me because I'm really, you know, looking to advance my career. What might the standard rate be for someone working in this role at your company? That way you can turn the tables and try and get a range from them and see if it actually matches the number that uh, you will be giving them. Um, so I think that that's kind of a, a tricky way, as I said, to turn the tables. Um, if it doesn't work, you can then give them your range. If they're like, oh, no, no, yes, that's, that's great. I'm so happy to hear that, but we really are interested in hearing your range. Um, then you can give that to them. But uh, I do like that, that trick, it's, it's, it's helpful. All right. So, Throughout all of this, you're going to be doing behavioral interview questions. And so um, they're going to start with probably the like, tell me about yourself, and then the why do you want to work here, and why this role. But throughout this, they'll most likely be also asking you these behavioral interview questions, which really focuses on a candidate's past experiences by asking them to provide specific examples of how they have demonstrated certain behaviors, knowledge, skills, and abilities. These questions are ways that they can then predict your future behavior. And these tend to be kind of pointed and probing and very specific. And the best way to answer these questions is with that STAR method as we discussed. And so um, again, I'll show you, I'll talk, talk about the STAR method in just a moment, but you should provide verifiable concrete evidence as to how a candidate has dealt with these issues in the past, as specific as possible. And it reveals um, how you might handle a similar situation in that employer's organization. And so these questions are often taken in the, in the form of, tell me about a time when you had to step up to be a leader when you use creativity to solve a particularly challenging problem in a creative way, you worked with a difficult supervisor. Tell me about a time when you failed because these aren't trick questions. You're most likely going to deal with a difficult coworker or fail in a project. And they wanna see how you deal with those issues that you just won't start yelling and you know smashing things on your desk that you're gonna go talk to people if you fail, if you're not doing very well in a, in a project or something. Um, so you want to make sure that you are prepared to ask these types of questions. Behavioral interview questions, there's much information online. I believe 
Barbara right now is dropping into the chat some behavioral interview questions, but you want to answer these questions using the STAR method. So let's say they ask you, tell me about a time when you failed. Well, you can say, hmm, that's a good question. And then you launch into your story. And first thing you do is explain the situation or problem or conflict you were facing. Give the listener context. Then tell them what tasks did you identify in response to this situation? Following that, what actions did you actually state? And this is where you start with these action verbs actually on your um, resume, you use the same method, STAR, to uh, create bullet points on your resume. And then what was the result or the outcome of your actions? And if the results can be quantified, do let them know. So this is kind of the arc of a story. And when I say, uh, you know, in an interview, you can never prepare for all of the questions that someone is going to ask you. Um, so really what you should be doing instead is think about specific experiences that you've had on your resume that you can talk about that might answer multiple behavioral interview questions. Write out a couple of, usually when I go into an interview, I prepare four or five star stories that I can tell in response to a couple of different behavioral questions. And so that way you can think on your feet and be really nimble and flexible so that if they ask you a question that um, you haven't prepared for, you kind of have a story to tell. Um, and I think that that's kind of really the, the best way to prepare for an interview. Um, I also, also quickly wanted to go over some illegal interview questions. I just wanna say, I know this is a big topic here um, and, you know, Again, please do feel free to make a mock interview with GSAS Compass to kind of go over this process of creating star stories. So illegal interview questions. No one can ask you how old you are, what are your religious beliefs, what's your ancestry, national origin or your birthplace, what's your native language, are you married, single, widowed, do you have any disabilities, have you ever been arrested, are your parents citizens, what was your last starting pay? This is so important. In New York State, it is illegal to ask that question because it has contributed to the pay gap between men and women. Women often make less money than men. And so if you go into a new job and they say, how much money were you making before? And you say $40,000, they know that they can probably get you for an easy 50, even though the position might be offering 60. So um, that way it contributes to women being paid less again. And um, People of underrepresented backgrounds, um, you know, often are, are also uh, kind of given lower salaries because of maybe previous salaries because of, you know, um, really institutional racism in America, right? So keep that in mind that if they're asking that question, you can not answer it. So how do you answer these questions? Let's say someone asked, asked you one of these illegal interview questions, and maybe you should pause and say, I don't want to be working here because they're asking me an illegal question, but sometimes a person interviewing might not be an HR manager and might not know they're asking you this illegal question. So you can say, I do not feel this is relevant to the position or the interview. And you can say it nicely and uh, it won't be seen as rude. And um, you know, again, it's a legal question, so they shouldn't be asking you. Or you can kind of address the concern behind the question um, if you want to choose to answer. So like, what is your national origin or place of birth? You can say, I'm authorized to work in the United States, right? You don't have to give them an answer as to where you were born. You can just say, I have OPT, CPT. Um, and then they know that. And I tell international students all the time, know as much as possible about the OPT, CPT process as possible because not all employers know that information. So talk to ISSO or the International Students and Scholars Office and make sure you get a lot of information so that you can tell an employer um, that you are, you know, authorized to work in the U.S. Or do you have any disabilities? You could say, no, I have no issues that would keep me from effectively carrying out my work in this job. Um, disabilities is something that you should be disclosing um, yourself. They shouldn't be asking it. Uh, it shouldn't be asking you that question, but uh, again, that's a that's a very specific individual um, decision to make to disclose a disability. So again, this is it's very personal. Do feel free to make an appointment if you'd like to discuss when and how to disclose a disability to an employer. All right. So and then at the end of the interview, they usually ask the question, "Do you have any questions for me?" Um, and it looks really bad if you say no. So you want to make sure that you come up with a list of questions in advance of the interview that maybe you like have written down in a little notepad. 
And um, as you can see, what's the orientation process for new hires? What's training and development programs offered? Do you offer mentorship opportunities for entry level employees? I love that question. That really tells a lot about an organization and if they're willing to help you kind of progress within an within a company. Um, and then my favorite and one that I always ask is, what's the next step in this process? What's your timetable? So that, that way I can know, well, I'm gonna have another interview after this. Okay, then after that, I'll probably have to give a presentation to a bunch of people. Okay, and then how, when should I be getting a response from you about this? So um, do ask that question. Uh, what's the timetable here? Um, but yeah, feel free to take a screenshot of that. But I think that these are really great ways to, to kind of engage the employer and to show that you're, you're thinking critically about the position. All right, so I wanna take a moment here and maybe go over with you what's your most challenging interview question. So in the, and Barbara's gonna drop into this chat, this uh, link to voting, and please do put in your response. Um, and I'm gonna go out here and take a look and see what people's most challenging interview questions are. Um, I would say probably the most challenging interview question that I always get is, um, or I've gotten in the past is um, period, like what's your career goals for the next five years? Um, I don't know about you, but uh, I have a harder time with these longer term goals. I'm pretty good at setting maybe this is what I'm going to do within this year, the next two years, but five years, that seems really broad. <laughs> um, and uh, that's harder for me. So I often have to think about that if that's something that they're going to ask. Um, so let's see if people are entering their in challenging interview questions. So this is called Mentimeter. It's really great um, to uh, use in your own presentations, completely free platform, and it adds a little interactive element. Uh, why should we hire you over another candidate? Mm, that's a good one. Um, yeah, then they, you're going to talk about maybe some very specific knowledge that you have um, that maybe another candidate might not have. Or let's say that you come from an international background. You can bring a different perspective to a workplace, right? That might be um, something that you see as a strength. Um, so that's kind of a question that's like a veiled, tell me about your strengths. And you should know those before you go into an interview. How do you explain complex topics to a non-specific audiences? Yeah, that's a great one. Um, and again, that's something that often takes practice. So feel free to make an appointment with GSAS Compass, talk to a friend, talk to a family member, and explain some of your maybe complex research to someone who's an educated but non-specialist you know, non background. Um, you kind of have to make it into very um, easily, easy to understand terms, right? That any anyone can follow. What's your biggest strength? What's your biggest weakness? Okay, so biggest strength, and to be honest with you, I've never been asked what's your biggest weakness. I'd be interested to know if anyone has, and we, we can definitely open this up. Um, but yeah, that's, that's one of those questions that um, I used to always present on and have stopped because I thought I've never been asked this question. <laughs> and usually what you want to do, though, is answer that question with, um, Okay, so my usually it's something that you've shown that you've overcome. Everyone has weaknesses. It shows self-awareness that you know your weaknesses and often an employer wants to know that. So I often say um, time management is something that I continue to struggle with. And so a ways to, that's maybe one of my weaknesses, but to overcome this weakness, I have developed a very clear um, calendaring system, as well as a very clear way to every day, I start my day by writing down a to-do list and then organizing those to-do lists by most important to least important. And that way I manage my time effectively. That's the type of response an employer wants to see. There's, it shows that you have an understanding of your weaknesses and that you're actively working to overcome those weaknesses. Okay, that was second. Yes, and I was asked, Give me your three strengths and weaknesses. Okay, there you go. Very interesting. Um, so again, that takes that self-reflection, right? Make a list of your weaknesses, make a list of your strengths, and go ahead and you know talk about those. Usually, you want it to be a weakness that's going to be something that um, you know you need to be strategic here, right? You don't want to say, oh well. My weakness is probably that like, I'm really bad at attention to detail. And the 
in the job requirement is being close attention to detail. They're going to definitely X your name out there, right? So look at the job description. And if that's something you struggle with, which is, again, something I do actually struggle with, um, I'm not going to say that, though, in an interview, because um, if it's a big part of the job, they might not consider me. So um, I've learned, again, ways. I reread my work many times. You know, I step away from an important email and then come back to it and check it again. But I still make small mistakes. And so, um, you know, I think that that's something that is really more between you. You don't have to show all of your cards in an interview, okay? You don't have to give them everything. Um, all right. Well, so thank you so much for sharing your questions and sharing your experience, particularly this give me your three strengths and weaknesses. I'm so happy to hear that. I guess that actually happens. I'll put it back in the uh, presentation then. But I think we covered it. All right, great. So let's let's keep on going. Um, and I, I want to make sure that we save some time for questions. So I'm going to be moving through this more quickly because these are just tips for successful video interviews. All right, some basics here. I'm sure you know all of these, right? Find a quiet place free from possible interruptions, use a good internet connection, and that's at least one megabytes per second. And then check your computer's audio is working. This happens to me all the time. Every time I go into a meeting, I have to check my audio because these headphones sometimes connect or they do not. And then select a neutral background. And so mine's a little busy, but it's not cluttered. Um, and that's the main thing. I think sometimes I see students like in front of a bookcase that kind of has like stuff all over it. Maybe just tidy that up a little bit. Or if you can, just find a neutral, you know, plain wall behind you. Um, I think, you know, I think it's now like a thing, like people rate other people's backgrounds in Zoom meetings. So I think people put a lot of thought into them. Um, but if you're just one of those people who's like, I just want to choose a blank wall, that works too. And then close any other necessary uh, web browsers or tabs. I always do that before a presentation. I close all my other windows to make sure it's easy and I'm not getting notifications in the middle of a meeting or something, because that can be really distracting. And then have a, no a pen, a notepad, and a copy of your resume on your desk so that you can kind of you know, be prepared to talk about your experiences. What to wear. All right, so really the idea here, I love this, is the three Ps. You want to have a proper fit. You want it to be polished and professional. It should be clean and wrinkle free. So research a company culture to determine what's appropriate. Usually my motto is if they're wearing jeans uh, in these photographs, maybe you though want to wear a pair of like slacks or, you know, khakis or something like that uh, to, you know, instill a jacket to kind of dress up to make the best impression. Um, and then once you're in the workplace, you can kind of go with the flow. But I do think that it's usually good to be um, maybe even a step up above what they're usually wearing. Um, I, I have done the exact opposite where I was in like a pantsuit and the person interviewing me didn't have shoes on. So I obviously didn't get that job. Um, but, you know, I do think that it was, a, it was for a, an artist studio. Um, I should have done my research, right? And maybe not wear a pantsuit to that interview. But do, do, do your research and see what you think might fit. And then I think the main thing is stay true to who you are. Confidence is key, and it can be really hard to feel confident when you're uncomfortable in your clothing. So um, I think the main thing is, you know, if you see people who are working in a really conservative setting and everyone's wearing ties and suits every day, and that's not you, then maybe think about that. Is that something you're going to be able to shift into? Um, and if you can, that's great. But if not, you know, uh, something to consider. So here's, um, you know, so for, you know, if you wanted to, uh, for, for women, you could say, you know, there's, uh, I often go with the more like masculine approach. I kind of love the, the, the shirt and the tie, um, but you can kind of, you know, do a dress or pant legs. Don't feel like you have to wear heels. You can definitely wear flats. Um, but here are just some nice examples, I think, of a broad range of good interview um, attire. And for men, you know, I think that, as I said, um, you know, kind of thinking about uh, kind of a nicer pant, uh, a nice sweater, maybe a, a shirt for a more casual company. Um, this is definitely for a more formal company. Uh, maybe you'll have to throw in a tie if it's corporate, right? Um, and doing this even in a video interview, right? You want to have, I'd say, both top and bottom. Um, you can't have, you know, party on the bottom uh, in case you stand up and something goes wrong, right? And we'll go over that in a second. So, the main thing too about video interviewing is a little tricky because you want to mimic eye contact and we can't do that right now through our video screen. So instead, you should be looking directly at the camera when you're talking to it. 
It's strange because you don't get to see the person's face, um, but it mimics eye contact. And then when you're listening to someone, you can look down and listen to them and look at their face and seeing how they're reacting, but you should really be looking up and then look down, right? And so it is, um, I'm being dramatic right now to kind of emphasize it, but this is, you do really wanna be looking directly at the camera when you're talking to someone. Keep your mood upbeat and convey optimism with your body language. Um, people love to talk to people who are upbeat, right? It, uh, I think it shows enthusiasm. Um, and so, you know, a way to do that too, without having to be, I'm someone who's very upbeat, right? You don't have to be like me and you're using your hands all the time and super excitable, right? You could just show confidence and upbeatness by sitting back in your chair, um, shoulders open, feet planted on the floor, arms resting the desk. I prefer to stand when I'm doing something like a presentation or maybe an interview. I'm not interviewing, but like if I were to interview, I'd probably go ahead and stand because that way it gives me a feeling of um, alertness that I don't feel when I'm sitting. So see what works best for you, um, but you wanna make sure that you're conveying an upbeat energy. And then when you're listening, smile and nod to show that you're listening. That's a you know human standard behavior, right? And then use hand gestures when you feel appropriate. When I'm presenting, I use my hands a lot, but when I'm interviewing, I usually keep them more subdued and then I use them as emphasis. So do what feels right for you and authentic, but I do think for those of you who maybe don't use hand gestures, they can be a really nice way to show engagement. You can use them, you know, just one, two, three, um, you know, coming together, coming apart, um, ways to just emphasize what you're saying and shows engagement. And try not to fidget or drift away from the device. Don't be looking around, it's distracting. All right, if things go wrong, what do you do if your audio stops working? So you should, before an interview, ask the person, is there a number that I can call? Let's say that something goes wrong. Um, and that's another thing you should do uh, before you interview. So make sure that you get a phone number to call in case everything kind of just um, short circuits. If there's a noise or interruption, you know, just you can go ahead and um, if there's a siren going on, a lot of us live in New York City, that's not uncommon. You just say, sorry for the noise. Um, you know, can, I, we'll take a couple of minutes before the noise passes and then just launch right back in after the noise has gone. If it's really severe, you might wanna mute yourself. Um, again, that's why I wear these noise canceling headphones so that the noises around me aren't as, um, you can't hear them as much. And then if someone enters the room unexpectedly, that could be like a pet or a family member. Um, and you know, you really need to deal with it. Just say, oh, I'm so sorry. I really apologize. Just one moment, turn off your camera, turn off, you know, mute yourself, deal with the issue, make sure the room is secure and then go back to it. Try not to take too long, but just, you know, instead of like letting the issue go on and, and trying to keep your attention maybe on the interview, just go ahead, stop yourself, stop the video, deal with it, and then come back so you can be um, fully attentive. So um, let's talk about pre-recorded interviews. Super awkward. Um, I don't know anyone who's had a pre-recorded -re -pre interview said it was um, a good thing, but so oftentimes now, uh, instead of actually connecting with a person, you'll be prompted to answer interview questions pre-recorded. Um, and so I would, what I would suggest here in this issue is it's, it's often used as a screening method for employers, kind of like a phone interview, right? Record your answer to each question and the employer will then review that recording later. And sometimes there's even a time limit for your answers. Um, uh, I did have one person who said that they actually had uh, multiple chances to record their answers. They spent all day doing it. Um, and, you know, that's maybe like on one end of the extreme, um, but you do get the chance to answer again. So that's kind of nice. Uh, but I sometimes I don't let you do that. So just try and get, um, you know, I'm sure the, the system will prompt you and let you know. It can feel really unnatural. So just try to imagine you're like having a live conversation with someone um, and try to, you know, just have notes in front of you. That could be another way that that's helpful. Video interviews, that's now a new thing. I would say, try not to read off your notes though, make it sound natural. Um, sometimes instead of having like a long list of notes, you can just have bullet point words that will help your mind trigger a thought so like if I'm going to tell a star story about a career fair, maybe I just have a career, the word career fair instead of the whole story. So I sound more natural when I'm giving it rather than reading notes. All right. So here's some 
COVID specific interview questions. I found this online. I thought it was helpful. Barbara, I think is going to drop into the chat some other ones. Um, and this is a great question to ask. Like maybe they might ask you. Um, and so maybe just be prepared in this new setting, right? So like, how do you organize your day when we're all at home? Can you do your work effectively? Um, you know, how do you communicate with a manager or coworker in a remote setting? And you can all draw upon your experiences of being a student, communicating with teachers, um, communicating um, with, you know, uh, um, colleagues, doing a group project, right? So you all have experiences to draw upon to answer these questions. All right, and so then after the interview, as I said, I wanna make sure you know how to follow up. So you send a nice thank you note, should be at least 24 hours after, should be very clear and concise. You wanna express gratitude for the opportunity to interview and mention an aspect of the interview that was of particular interest to you. Um, and then you can ask the interviewer to maybe clarify any questions um, it, it, that you had um, that you didn't get to ask during the interview or you thought of afterwards. Um, and then you can maybe add something that you forgot to mention. Um, and so here's a sample of a thank you. You know, thank you for the interview. That could be the subject. Um, you know, I want to thank you for inter me, interviewing me yesterday for the position of chemical engineer. I enjoyed learning about the needs of your department and the future of your company. With my background in research labs at Columbia and as the president of the student group Women in Science at Columbia WISC, I believe my skills and experiences have prepared me for the role. I'm specifically interested in the professional development opportunities that this position offers, such as annual conferences that employees are encouraged to attend. Thank you again for the opportunity to discuss my candidacy for chemical engineering position. I look forward to hearing from you. Um, I kind of just made this up, but that's usually the format. It's like, thank you. This is what I learned. Oops. This is what I learned. This is my skills and what makes me a good role. This is something I learned in the interview that excites me about the position. And then the ending. It's super short to the point. Okay. Let's say you send that and then they are going to say, oh yeah. So you ask that question, what are the next steps in this process? And they say, we'll get back to you in two weeks. It's always what they say and they never get back to you in two weeks. It's happened once maybe to me, but like often they just don't get back to you. So let's say two weeks go by, you send a follow-up, but do be patient because, um, you know, it, it's often, as I said, they don't keep those timelines and you can follow up again and say, okay, so the two weeks have passed, radio silence, um, and it's the next day and you're biting your nails and you're, you know, being feeling super anxious write to them and just say, thank you again for the opportunity to interview for the position of chemical engineer. I'm writing to inquire about the status of my application. Any information would be appreciated. Super short to the point, right? And then hopefully they'll get back to you. All right, so um, I'm gonna stop recording now so we can take some questions from the group. Um, if I can stop recording, excellent.